how do we use probiotics to improve our health, in this case, looked at diarrhea. Randomized control trial. And the setup here was interesting. They took 200 people with IBSD, diarrheal type IBS. They gave them either placebo or bifidobacterium longum at 1 billion CFU per day. So standard dose or bifidobacterium longum that was heat killed. And here's what they found. At three months, both the normal or living probiotic and comparatively the dead probiotics had a measurable, noticeable, and significant effect on improving diarrhea. And I want to call your attention to this graph. What they're doing here is known as a, I believe this is technically a Likert score. So they're essentially taking a symptom inventory questionnaire every roughly 30 days. And what you see is that even in the placebo group, yeah, there's a small improvement in symptoms, but there's a significantly higher level of improvement in the diarrhea in both the alive and the dead probiotic group. But look at this, I think, more key point, which is day 30, you see some improvement. There's more improvement at day 60 and even more improvement at roughly day 90. So as we've covered with other research in the past, it does seem that a minimum of two or probably even more like three months is what you should utilize a probiotic protocol for so that you can obtain the full effect. The general way I approach this at the clinic is we keep utilizing therapies, diet, probiotics, herbals of various sorts, what have you, in sort of a stepwise fashion until we hit a pinnacle of improvement where both the patient and myself are happy and we've been stable in that improvement for at least one to two months, and then we wean off. I think that's the best way to approach this. That hasn't been published per se. Uh, that would be kind of a hard study to publish because it's multifactorial. It's really uh, harder, I think, to study a, a clinical model, and it's easier to study just a therapeutic. So we can use randomized control trials to learn about the tools. How we use the tools, I think, is a little bit harder to suss out in our CT setup. In any case, the other point from this study I wanted to make was looking at what's known as the IBS composite score. So IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, has a number of symptoms that are composing that diagnosis. One is diarrhea. We just covered the results there. But there's two others, bloating and abdominal pain. So you can measure this different ways. You, you can look at just let's say the bowels, just your diarrhea or just your constipation, or you can look at the aggregate score of all of your digestive symptoms, or at least all of the IPS symptoms. And that's what you're seeing in this other graphic where either group, the dead probiotic or the living probiotic, saw an improvement in their total IBS or, or the composite score. So their, their global digestive symptoms also improved. And not to get too into the nerdy details on this, but the total improvement in this scoring system, known as the IBS SSS, Symptom Severity Score or Survey, was 170 points. We had discussed with Alex Ford, who is at Leeds University, that you want to see at least a 70 point improvement in this score for it to be clinically significant. So in this case, we're seeing 170 points of improvement. So pretty remarkable improvements, either with the probiotic that's alive or dead in diarrhea or in the composite IBS score, which includes diarrhea, but also lumps in with that bloating and abdominal pain. And by the way, if this has been helpful, please comment and subscribe. I really do appreciate hearing what people think. So I'll look forward to reviewing your comments. The other thing, just to briefly touch on this, would be, well, how is it that we're seeing all of these benefits from the probiotics? And there's a few reasons why. Firstly, if there is some sort of microbial provocator, if you will, SIBO, candida, probiotics are quite potent anti-SIBO, antibacterial, and antifungal. So one of the mechanisms here could be the fact that probiotics will balance out these 
overgrowths or dysbioses or fungal populations that are too high. And in tandem with that, you'll see improvements in the health of the lining of the gut. Said another way, you'll see a reduction in leaky gut. So it's not surprising then from this that we would see not only diarrhea improve, but also bloating and abdominal pain because we're addressing microbial or floral issues. Simultaneously, we're improving the health of the lining of the gut. And also, if the health of the lining of the gut is improved, the immune system is less triggered and then there's less inflammation. Coming now to the second study, one of the things that I really appreciate about probiotics is they tend to be corrective. Meaning if you have diarrhea or constipation, probiotics bring you back to center. This doesn't happen with some therapies in the GI toolkit. Let's say you are constipated and you use magnesium, senna, vitamin C, prokinetics. Those will help with the constipation. However, if you have diarrhea and you take those, they will make your diarrhea worse, quite worse in some cases. Probiotics novel in the sense that they're corrective. And that's case in point with this next study, a meta-analysis that found probiotics were effective for constipation. 17 randomized control trials were summarized in this meta-analysis. There was a placebo group, always very important. And as you can imagine, with 17 trials being summarized, there was difference or, or uh, some changes in the probiotic formulas that were used. So some were lactobacillus, some were bifidobacterium, some were soil-based, some were single formula, some were blends. It really didn't seem to matter. There was efficacy demonstrated across trials despite the formulas being different, which is why I've said for so long, we don't have to make probiotic use very complicated or super specific. Also, they added in some of these studies, along with the probiotic, they added a prebiotic. This is known as a symbiotic. So a, a probiotic is just the bacteria. A prebiotic is just the substrate that feeds the bacteria. I think inulin or FOS. And then a symbiotic is a formula that gives you probiotic plus prebiotic. That's relevant because they found that either probiotics or separately to that, the symbiotic treatments, both of these were better than placebo in treating constipation. The symbiotics, were more effective for constipation than just a probiotic. Meaning a probiotic combined with a prebiotic is more effective for constipation. If constipation is your primary symptom, because some people will go to diarrhea and oscillate back to constipation, different than that would be someone whose predominant symptom is constipation. You might wanna consider adding a prebiotic along with your probiotic. Now, there's also an important nuance here in that for people with bloating, pain, and diarrhea, prebiotics don't seem to offer any benefit. And this was summarized in a recent meta-analysis looking at IBS, remembering that IBS is a number of symptoms. Prebiotics did not demonstrate any efficacy for IBS. But in this study, when looking just at constipation, the combination of probiotics with prebiotics was better than probiotics alone. So again, if constipation is your primary symptom, you might wanna consider adding to that a prebiotic. The way I would advise doing this, and always check these things with your healthcare provider, but as a general principle, because in some people, prebiotics can trigger bloating, pain, gas, I think it's best to quell symptoms with a probiotic alone first, like that last study demonstrated improvements in bloating and pain in, in, in the IBS score. So quell symptoms a bit first with a probiotic, using a probiotic in isolation for one or two months, then layer on top of that, the prebiotic. Regarding dose, some studies have found that five grams of a prebiotic offers benefit with really a minimal likelihood of triggering flatulence, gas, bloating, and pain. You could go to 10 or even 15 grams per day. I would just take this in a stepwise fashion. First, probiotics, one or two months, get to a baseline. Then prebiotics, five grams per day. If that works wonderfully, great. No need to increase, but you could go up to 10, give that a couple of weeks, and even up to 15. With one important caveat here, which is with prebiotics, it's somewhat normal to see some transient 
bloating and gas. And this is as your body and your microbiome is adjusting to having that higher level of substrate feeding the bacteria that should resolve within one to two weeks, but just be wary of that or, or cognizant of that because it would be unfortunate if you discontinued that trial too soon because you had some bloating, some gas, and you didn't realize that's somewhat normal and oftentimes transient. If it lasts longer than a week or two, then you might be part of a cohort of people for whom prebiotics just aren't helpful. 